Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Lone Ranger. Original air dates January 13th, 1939, and the title is Kidnapper's Cave. Thanks for listening, and let's get into it. horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. In the early days of the western United States, cattle rustlers and outlaws roamed the range country. They were more than a match for the local sheriffs, and they knew the country so well that no posse could overtake them after one of their raids. It was for this reason that the masked rider of the plains started his great fight for justice. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, he fought crime and criminals through the length and breadth of seven states, and it was through his efforts that law and order was finally established on the lawless frontier. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're on the trail of Wolf Cutler! Hi, oh, Silver! Away! <laughs> Mort Bowman, a wealthy rancher, was seated at a table in the living room of his home. On the table were several papers that had been given him by the short, thick-set man who stood beside him. Across the room, anxiously watching the two men, was a young girl, Nellie Bowman, the rancher's adopted daughter, and... Hmm. You're quite certain these papers state the facts, are you, Higgins? Just what do you mean, Bowman? Well, this one is an affidavit to the effect that you really are Clem Higgins and that your home was in Curtisville 16 years ago. Are you doubting it? No, no, I didn't mean to imply that. But naturally, you understand I have to be sure of the facts. I can't simply take your word for it that you're Nellie's father. I ain't asking you to take my word. I have give you proof there in writing, and I aim to have my rights. You're right. I reckon a father's got a right to his own flesh and blood. Well, then, assuming you're Nellie's father, I don't understand why you ever gave her up. It wasn't that I wanted to. It was just that I'd had hard luck. Nellie's maw died, and I didn't have no work, and I was troubled with a sight of sickness, and... Well, I reckon you savvy how them things are without my telling you. It didn't seem like there was nothing left for me to do but leave the young'un with the preacher. He told me at the time I adopted Nellie that she'd been left on his porch when he was away from home. That was the way of it. You didn't have the courage to tell the preacher what you planned to do? Say, now, look here. I don't just like the tone you've been taking with me, Bowman. No? No, you bet I don't, and I've had enough of it. What do you propose to do about it? I'll show you. Either you act reasonable or we don't come to terms. Terms? You heard me. Nellie's my girl. If I'm a mind to, I got a perfect legal right to take her and walk right out of here. Just a moment. And I'd like to see you try and stop me. Not so fast, Higgins. 
I think there's several things you fail to understand. In the first place, I adopted Nellie in good faith. She's been my daughter for 15 years, ever since she was a year old. That don't mean nothing to me. She's not only been my daughter, but she's also the heir to my estate in the event I die before she's married. I've had big plans for Nellie. Her happiness is my one concern. And I don't propose to trust that happiness to a man who's a stranger to both of us unless he can prove something more than a mere legal right to its guardianship. What are you getting at? I mean, you've got to satisfy me that Nellie would be happy with you. Happy with her own paw? Why, of course she'd be. Ain't that right, Nellie? You'd like to be with your real paw, wouldn't you? No. I don't like you. I don't want to leave here. I won't leave. Well, I think that answers you. Not by a blame sight, it don't. If she don't want to come willing, then she'll come anyhow. I told you I know my rights and I'll have them. I doubt very much that your rights are as great as you claim, Higgins. Are you hinting again that them papers don't tell the truth? I know nothing about that. But a father who would leave his year old child for strangers to bring up wouldn't get far in any court of law, I'm afraid. Why, blessed you, I'll... Wait. Don't you threaten me. I've stated my belief. But I think there's another way out of this. Yeah? I wonder. Perhaps a money settlement. Money? Who for? Look here, Higgins. If I decide your claim is valid, would you be willing to relinquish all your rights in exchange for a cash payment? How much cash? It'd take a heap of cash, Bowman, to make up for the way a father feels about his only living youngin'. Let's say $10,000. No, I reckon you mean well. But the more I think about it, the more I see what I'm mighty fond of Nellie. 15000 Uh... Twenty thousand? Fifteen. I reckon you don't think much of family ties. I said fifteen thousand. I still suspect this is nothing more or less than blackmail, but it's worth that to get rid of you. Refuse it, and I'll fight you in every court in the land. You're a mighty hard man, Bowman. Well? But but I'll take it. Very well. Of course, I'll check on these papers first. You can do like I said afore. Write to the sheriff of Richmond County. He'll tell you what's written in papers is fact. And he'll tell you I'm a real upstanding man. I'll write him. Then when you do, you... Oh, pardon me. Yes? It's Walt, boss. Oh, come in, Walt. Howdy, Nellie. Hello, Walt. Boss, all I want to see you about was them heifers with... Well, I'll be switched. Wolf Cutler. Who are you talking to? You, of course. Who'd you suppose? Boss, where'd you meet up with this coyote? I'm afraid you've made a mistake, Walt. This man's name is Clem Higgins. If it is, then he's changed it since I knew him. Keep your blasted mouth shut. What's his game, boss? What's he here for? I'm beginning to wonder. You heard me. If you aim to stay healthy, shut up. <laughs> Shucks, Wolf, you ought to know better than to try to build a bluff with me. I licked you regularly for 20 years back in Missouri. I guess I can do it once more if you ask for you it. Try. I'm getting to the bottom of this. Walt, you say you know this man? Sure do. We were neighbors back where I was raised. <laughs> Till he lit out one jump ahead of the law. Boss, what is he doing here? He came here claiming to be Nellie's father. And I am. You claim to be... Why, you sneaking, scheming kin of a polecat. You ain't no more Nellie's paw than, than I am. He brought these papers with him. One states he lived in Curtisville when Nellie was born what? there. Well, that was 16 years ago. Yeah. And 16 years ago, this skunk was setting out a five-year sentence for rustling over to the Lehigh County Jail. I know he was, because the sheriff that jailed him told me. And if you want the proof, I'll get it for you. I'll take your word for it. Just hold on. You fellas can't cheat me out of what's Start time. moving. But wait, I'm not On finished. your way. Make yourself scarce, Wolf. You'll be sorry for interfering. I'll take that chance. Now, get. But before you leave, I'll give you a warning. The next time I see you around here, I'll shoot you on sight. I'll get. But you ain't the only ones that can give warnings. You two have just made the biggest mistake you could have. And you won't be long finding it out. Close the door, Walt. Yeah. And this is an order. If that fellow makes trouble again, shoot to kill. Just beyond the southern boundaries of Bowman's Ranch were the great salt caves. Dark and mysterious, their caverns threaded by a swift underground river, and it was seldom that anybody in the neighborhood entered them. Several days later, however, the Lone Ranger was riding back to his camp when a volley of shots rang out from the direction of the caves. Oh, oh, Silver. Oh, fella. Come on. Over there near the trail. There's something wrong, Silver. Three men, and it looks like a girl. Silver, it is a girl. Perhaps Bowman's daughter. She's trying to get away from those men. And one of them is Wolf Cutler. Come on, Silver. We're taking a hand. Come on, boy. Come on. (laughs) 
But even as the masked man rode after them, the outlaws, one of whom was Wolf Cutler, overtook their quarry. Wolf dragged the screaming girl from the saddle of her horse. Then at a cry from his companions, who had sighted the masked man in the distance, he pulled sharply on the reins of his horse, dug in his spurs, and led the flight toward the caves close by. Come on, boys! This way! Quit yelling! Get moving, fellas! We can just make it! Get to the caves and we're safe! Silver, though far behind at first, rapidly gained on Wolf and his partners. But the caves were too close. As they neared the dark entrance, the outlaws reined up with... All right, young'un. You're coming along. Leave me be. Leave me be. Keep still before I make a wish ahead. Hurry, fellas, inside. What about our horses? To blaze us with them. We don't need them. Fight, Wolf. This way. Keep clear of the river. Yeah. Behind them rocks and we're safe. Come on. Last choice said shut up. Oh, leave me go. Please leave me go. Ah, but you take the kid. Take her on to the hideout. Me and Spike will stay here and hold off that fellow that chased us. Give the girl here. No. Come on. No. No. There he is. Keep down behind these rocks. If he comes inside, let him have it. Yeah. Yeah, he's coming, all right. Stranger, clear out of here. Send that girl out here. Give it to him. How do you like that, mister? Did we hit him? I don't know. So doggone dark and hit... No, there he is. <laughs> I tailing it. Just keep going, stranger. And don't trouble yourself to come back. I'm leaving, but I'll be back. Shoot yourself, mister. Don't matter none to us. Come on, Silver. Well, he's gone. Uh-huh. <laughs> Didn't have no choice. We could hold off him and a hundred others from here. Anybody trying to get us has to stand out in the open again the light from the entrance. Well, we're safe behind these rocks. Spike, I'm glad I threw in with you and Bud. I wouldn't have known anything about this place. Well, there ain't nothing about it. We don't know. You get the grub stored away? It's back where Bud took the kid. Enough grub for a month and ammunition for twice as long. And how about the note to Bowman? Bud gave it to one of Bowman's hands all sealed up to deliver. Bowman should have it right about now. Good. <laughs> Spike, we got everything our way. We're holding the girl. We got a place where nobody can drive us out. There's grub to eat and bullets to fight with. And if all them things fail, why, we still got a way to leave these caves that nobody knows about. Realizing at once that it would be impossible to attack the outlaws alone, the masked man raced back to camp for Tonto. We see him as he draws Silver to a halt. Oh, Silver. Oh, boy. Tonto, I've got bad news. Uh, Me got bad news, too. You have? Listen to this. Three outlaws captured Mort Bowman's daughter. Uh, Tonto, no. How did you find out? Me at ranch when Mort get note from outlaw fella. They sent him a note? Uh, Note say, pay plenty cash. Or Mort not get girl back. Tonto, I rode here to get you and return to the caves and see we couldn't find a way to get the best of those crooks. Uh, but this changes things. What matter? Where did the note say the money must be delivered? It say send cash to the cave. And I was right. Do you know what that means, Kimosabe? What that? This kidnapping was plotted beforehand. Those outlaws didn't escape to the caves because I was near. They rode there because that was the hideout they had planned to use. Uh, but they'd never use it if there was just one way to leave the caves. If that were the case, Mort would only have to pay the money, get his daughter back, and wait outside for the outlaws to leave, which they'd have to do sooner or later. Isn't that right. In other words, those outlaws know they can't be trapped that easily, and the only answer can be a secret exit. Uh, me here, their other way out. Then you know it's true. Huh? Where is the other exit? Uh, Tonto not know that. Me here, meds man, till long time ago. But him not say where. What does Bowman plan to do? Him plenty mad. Him get cowboy and go after outlaw. He means to attack? Not right. But he can't. It would be foolish. In the first place, he'll hardly have a chance to get at them. Uh, me, no. And in the second place, if Morton and his men could get at Wolf and his partners, they'd simply escape through their secret exit. Uh, now that we've got to find a way to trick those outlaws, that's the only way we can get the girl back. Tonto got plan. You have? They're river in cave. It run underground. I've heard of it. Maybe river help us. You have a plan, Tonto. There's no time to waste. We've got to stop Mort from attacking. It'll only mean unnecessary loss of life. Uh, Call your horse, Kimasabi. Here, Scout. Steady, old fellow. We'll get to the ranks as fast as we can. You can explain your scheme while we ride. Uh, get him up, Scout. Hi, old 
The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Continue our story. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode toward Bowman's ranch in an effort to stop him before he could lead his men against the outlaws, the rancher was shouting orders in front of his home. I don't want a man to ride with us who isn't armed and ready to fight. We're going to clean those crooks out. We're going to show them what it means to try a trick like this on us. Yes, Walt. I don't get me wrong, Mr. Bowman. But I was just wondering if you savvy what you're running up against going after Wolf and Bud and Spike in the salt caves. Do I understand you're afraid? Of course I ain't. I'll go any place you say to go. But, well, there, there ain't much chance... Walt, that... first that fellow you call Wolf tried to swindle me. Now he's resorting to kidnapping. Well, he'll pay for that no matter what the cost. Uh, how much did he ask you to pay over to get Nelly back? $20,000. <laughs> he's got big notions, ain't he? It's not the money. I'd pay that much and more gladly to ensure her safety. But the point is this. Once you give in to fellas like them, others will use the same tactics. Well, you're the boss, Mr. Bowman. I reckon you ought to savvy what you're doing. Boys are all settled up and ready to go, Mr. Bowman. Thanks. Get mounted, men. All right. Hold still there, boy. Follow me, and when we reach the caves, do nothing unless by my orders. We'll follow you, Mark. Hey, who's that coming? What? It's a masked fella. Ain't that a redskin with him? More outlaws. Grab these fellas. No, you don't. You're not true. Keep them covered, Kimosabe. Uh, Look here, you two. You better put down them guns before you find yourself so deep in trouble you're over your head. We'll take care of that. Mort, I've got to talk to you. I'm through talking with outlaws. The only language your kind understands is that of six guns. We're not outlaws. And prove it by taking off your mask. The mask stays on. Mort, you can't attack the cave. What's that? It would be foolish. You wouldn't have a chance. Oh, they're parts of them crooks. You can tell it from the way they talk. They come here just to say the hides of their friends. They aren't fooling me. You've got to listen to me. Men, grab these fellas. Take their guns away from them. Don't let them get away. Stay back. What the... Hey, let go of my bridle. If you won't listen to me with your men here to help you, you're going where I can talk to you alone and you'll have to listen. Get moving. Hey, stop them. They're going to take the boss. You follow us. I won't answer for his safety. Remain behind and he won't be harmed. Come on, get Silver. Let's go. You can't let him go. What do we do? Uh, there ain't nothing we can do. They got the boss. The masked fella just as much as said if we followed, he'd do for him. But we can't. We're going to wait right here till we see if the masked fella keeps his word or not. If he sends the boss back safe and sound, well, there's no harm done. But if he don't, and we'll go after them fellas. And when we catch him, we'll string him up. It was less than an hour, however, before Mort returned to the ranch unharmed. He seemed to have forgotten his determination to attack Wolf and his companions, and instead gave a brief order to one of his men, who rode off to the caves alone. Within the great salt caves, the outlaws had chosen the one cavern where they could make camp in comfort. Its farther side was bounded by the swift, dark underground river, and... Say, kid, can't you never quit crying? Now, cut out them sniffles. They ain't going to help you any. Why don't you let them go home? 
You'll get home all right. If your pa's got the sense I think he has. Spike. Yeah. You sent Bud back to keep guard? Uh-huh. That only take turn about. Good enough. All we got to do is make sure we can't be took by surprise and the cards are in our hands. Buddy, we ain't heard nothing of the girl's old man, though. <laughs> we'll hear from him. Don't you worry about that. Yeah, think he'll come through with the cash? Sure he will. Shucks, he might try to make a fight of it just at first. But as soon as he sees we've got him licked, he'll knuckle under. Well, here's hoping he don't take his time about it. Look here, kid. What? You can help us and yourself, too, if you want to. I won't help you. No, it ain't nothing you won't find easy. If your pa shows up, just tell him how scared you are and how bad you want to get back home. And maybe that'll help persuade him to come across the cash a little sooner. You, you let me talk to him? He'll be able to hear you if you call to him. We'll let you stand back behind the rocks, back where we come into the caves. I, I'll talk to him. But I'll tell him to come after you. That's what I'll do. I hope he gets every one of you. <laughs> when you forget to cry, you're kind of a spitfire, ain't you? Don't talk to me. No, I didn't mean oh, to. I'll let the kid alone if that's the way she wants it, Wolf. Hey, Wait. Wolf. Wait. Come over here. It's Bud calling. Come on. Maybe it's trouble. Bud, what's up? Hurry up. Are they attacking? Oh, well, there's more. Send one of these men here with a message for us. That's him over by the entrance. He come alone? Uh-huh. And just listen to what he's got to say. Hey there. Mort sent you here. I just come from the ranch. Well, what's he got to say? He said to tell you he's riding to town to raise the cash right now. And he'll pay it over if you promise not to hurt the girl. He's paying $20,000. Mister. Well, what's the answer? You get back to the ranch and tell Mort when we see the cash, he gets the girl. And she won't be hard none, neither. I'll tell him. We'll most likely be back tonight. Think of it, fellas. 20,000 to divide between us. Cash up plenty. You fellas are lucky. I might have got all that for myself if more had believed them papers I fixed up. But, well, such as it is, I'm satisfied. <laughs> hours passed. Bowman returned to his ranch and gathered his men together for the trip to the caves. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were there before them. I wonder what's keeping Mort. He should be here by now. Him come soon. When he gets here, you know what we're to do, don't you, Kimasabi? Uh, me? No. Mort will enter the caves with his men and keep Wolf and his partners occupied when we go inside and get to the underground river without being noticed. Mm, that right. And after that, it's up to us. Mm, there'll be plenty danger. We'll not worry about that now. What's that? Tonto think it meant them now. It must be. Stay out of sight. They don't want any of Mort's men to hail us and reveal the fact that we're here. Uh. Yes, that's Mort, all right. They're dismounting. Uh, they're in plenty big hurry. Mort's anxious to get his daughter back, Tonto, and you can't blame him. We go now. Wait till they're all inside. All right, Tonto, let's go. Here we are, Tata. The river. So dark, it's difficult to see. The river go right by cave where them got girl. You were sure of that? Huh? Not so sure. I had to leave my guns behind with you. They'd be useless anyhow after they'd been in the water. You let Tonto go. No, Tonto. This is my job. Me not afraid. I know you're not, Kimasabi. There shouldn't be any danger unless the river should flow through a tunnel. Well, there wouldn't be room for me to get my head out of water to breathe. And I don't expect that. Afterwards, everything depends on how quickly I can act. Uh-huh. I have my guns. Uh-huh. Me got them. Then here goes Tonto. And wish me luck. You take plenty care. At the same time that the masked man was slipping into the mysterious waters of the underground river, Bowman threw the ransom money to the outlaws as they stood behind the protection of the rocks. There's the cash. 
I'll bring Nelly here. Fooling money, huh? All right. You'll get the girl as soon as we count this to see if it's all here. Then hurry. Come on, Spike. But you'll be all right here alone. Them fellas won't try nothing as long as we still got the girl. I'll handle them. Spike, we'll go back to the cabin where there's light enough to see what's here. Ward ain't likely to try and cheat us none. But he'll sure break his neck to get his hands on us after we give Nilly back. <laughs> uh-huh. But that ain't nothing to make us lose no sleep. If he can find out how we got out of here and locate where we've gone afterwards, then he's welcome to it. Uh, here we are. Has my father come yet? He sure has, kid. And you're going to let me go? Don't get in such a hurry. You'll be free soon enough. Got that cash, Wolf. Uh-huh. Gosh, 20000 sure makes quite a heap of bills, don't it? <laughs> yeah, and it's one of the prettiest pictures I've ever seen. Huh? What's ailing you, kid? I, uh, nothing. Hey, I... you're as white as a sheet. You look like maybe you'd seen a ghost. It was nothing, I tell you. What's she looking at? The river. There's somebody's hand coming over the edge. Come on. Well, what's in the neck? Come on, get him. Watch out. He's going to throw that box. Hey, listen. Ah, shoot him down. Shoot him down. You can't hold him on. Let me stand clear. I'll drill him. No, no. Don't shoot. You're likely to hit me. Give me a chance to get loose. Wait. No. You'll get loose and take this. Oh. Nelly, call out. Make all the noise you can. Now I'll get you. Blast you. You'll get You're going to join your partner there. Uh, I'll fix you. It wasn't enough, huh? And here's another. Uh, what's going on back here? Wolf! Spike, what's you fighting about? Put them up. A masked man. I've got Wolf's gun. Make a move and I'll shoot. I ain't moving. Oh. Up on your feet, Spike. Stand beside this fellow with your arms raised. Oh, yeah. You, you, you trick us. Get Wolf to his feet. Hey, what's the masked man? You all right? You get them to come? Here they are, Wolf. Well, I'll be. A gun on two of them, and the other's still knocked out. Stranger, you must have put up a fight that was a beauty to see. Oh, all I'm regretting is that I wasn't here to give them rotten crooks a couple of good ones myself. Are you all right, Nellie? I, I was scared, but I'm all right, I guess. There, there, honey, of course you are. Toto, uh, give me my guns. Uh, here, gun. Thanks. I think you can attend to these fellows all right now, Mort. We'll attend to them and see they get just exactly what they got coming to them. Just let me at them, boss. Stay away from me. Get back. We give up. You heard us give up. You can't do nothing to us. Give us a chance at a fair trial. You don't deserve no trial. But you'll get it. A trial and then the rope for the three of you. But you wouldn't have got us if the mass fella hadn't had the nerve to swim the river. But he did. Wait. Where'd he go? I think I seen him and the redskin head back for the entrance, boss. They left? But they got back my daughter and saved my money besides. And they didn't even stay to be thanked. Thank you.
The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.